Dear children, now I would like to teach the second term lessons. This is the first lesson for the second term. It is a biology lesson, comes under the competency level 1.4, investigate the process of digestion in human. Uh, in human. The, for, to complete this lesson, competency level, it is allocated four periods. The textbook topic is for the same lesson given as biological processes in human body. So here are the learning outcomes. Once you follow three lessons, you should be able to state what digestion is. And also you should be able to describe the process of digestion and functions of mouth, esophagus, stomach and small and large intestine and rectum. And also you should be able to state the role of liver, pancreas and salivary glands. And you should be able to list the end product of digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and related enzymes. Finally, you should be able to present information on diseases and disorders associated with digestive system and their prevention. Let's proceed to the first lesson, the process of human digestion and the end products of digestion. This slide give, gives you a brief idea about why digestion is important. Because digestion provides the raw materials for growth and development of cells and it is it provides energy needed for the action of all voluntary and involuntary muscles in the body and to repair the worn out tissues and as a major energy source for all chemical reactions happening in the body and keep you healthy. Now let's see what do we digest? Now you know why it is important. Now let's see what do you digest? It's all about the nutrients. These nutrients are complex organic compounds. This is the time to recall the first lesson in your grade 10, grade 10. And you know these complex compounds do not dissolve in water and cannot absorb into the human body. These nutrients can be categorized into three major groups as carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. Now you have a, some kind of idea. Nutrients are complex compounds that do not dissolve in water easily. So then digestion is the process by which the complex organic compounds are converted into simple organic products to be absorbed into the human body. Or else we can simply say that Digestion is a process of conversion of complex organic compounds to simple absorbable molecules. If you look at the phases of digestion, we can categorize into three main phases as the mechanical digestion, chemical digestion and the absorption. Chemical, uh, sorry, mechanical digestion is the breakdown of larger particles, larger food pieces into smaller pieces. Chemical digestion is the, that is happened due to the action of enzymes on these smaller particles and convert into smaller molecules. Absorption is the phase. This small molecules are get into the bloodstream or absorb into the bloodstream. So this mechanism of digestion or the digestion process 
happen in different places. In the mouth cavity or the buccal cavity, stomach, in the small intestine and large intestine. Let's see one by one what is happening, what kind of digestion, whether it is a mechanical digestion or the chemical digestion or the absorption happen or three of these happen in these uh, places separately. Now, let's consider the digestion in the buccal cavity. First, understand what is this buccal cavity. Buccal cavity is the cavity when you open your mouth. This mouth is the opening of the buccal cavity. And it is surrounded by these muscular lips. In this photograph picture you can see the whole area of the buccal cavity. Inside the buccal cavity you can see teeth and tongue and salivary glands are somewhere here. In the next slide I will show you this buccal cavity made out of upper and lower jaw. This lower jaw, jaw on layer movable one. And this tongue is attached to the flow of the buccal cavity. These salivary glands are also located in these areas. Three salivary glands. And tongue, why the tongue is needed? To identify the different tastes and mix the food with the saliva. That will help to swallow the food bolus. If you chew rice for some time, what tasty sense is? You do it and fine. When food is taken in through the mouth, these are something common thing. This lesson is actually every day you do. What will you do when you take food into your mouth? You chew and mix it. Chew and let that food to mix. Mixing. This is the chewing and grinding is done with the help of your teeth. So that is called mechanical breakdown. This mechanical breakdown, especially carbon, carbohydrates due to chewing and also that begins the chemical digestion because saliva, saliva contain a, a, an enzyme called salivary amylase. Because of this action on carbohydrate food, 30% of starch in that carbohydrate converted into maltose. That means carbohydrate foods start its digestion in the buccal cavity. Not protein, not lipid, only carbohydrate. So now let's see the activity, what the more two important activities taken place inside the buccal cavity again, that chewing and grinding of that mechanical breakdown is called a scientific term we give for that whole process as the mastication of food broken down of food into smaller particles by chewing action of teeth. Then the, once it gets broken down, what will happen? The food make a food bolus. What is food bolus? That is the when the food mix with saliva and make a, a kind of bowl because it is uh, needed to, it help, it is really needed to because it facilitates swallowing. Then this bolus push towards the posterior part of the buccal cavity to the pharynx. 
Then comes to the esophagus. Pharynx is the common area for the respiratory system and to the digestive system. And here, if this is a common thing, now you have to understand, now we have the food bolus here and what will happen if it goes to the trachea? So to prevent that, there is a flap here that is called epiglottis. This epiglottis close the windpipe or the trachea when you eat. That is why our adults say, do not talk when eating. The bolus passes through the esophagus through the peristaltic movement. Now, through this esophagus, inside the esophagus, nothing has happened to the food. No digestion. No mechanical breakdown, no chemical reaction happens. This food bolus comes to the stomach. Now look at the location of the stomach in your body. It is in the right side, in the upper abdominal region. Here, this is the cross. You can get an idea about the cross section of the uh, empty stomach. Here you can see a large number of grooves like structures inside the stomach. Here this is a sac like structure. You can see it's sac like structure and it is the broader structure in the digestive system. As I said it is located in the upper abdominal cavity towards the left side. The empty stomach is a bit shrink and smaller and looks more richer in the walls. But during eating what has happened, these richer like structures unfolded and expand the volume. At that time, that can hold 2.4 liters, liter volume, volume. And... There are some glands in this lining of the stomach. So this lining, these glands will secrete 2 to 4 liters of gastric juices per day. 2, 2, 2 to 4 liters. And one of the gastric juice is HCL, hydrochloric acid. So you know it is an acid. So, it maintains the pH between 2 to 4. That means acidic condition inside the stomach. This is, a, this is an important point remember. Inside the stomach, the medium is acidic. This acidic medium is essential for absorb vitamin B12 as well as it needs to activate this pepsin enzyme. So, this, if you take as the common term as gastric juice, this gastric juice contains 98% water, HCl or hydrochloric, pepsin is a protein digestive enzyme, and mucus and some other chemicals in trace, trace amounts such as bicarbonates. All these together we call as gastric juices. Now let's see what is the what is happening inside the stomach. Now this food bolus <coughs> comes through the esophagus and when it reaches to uh, the stomach here can you see here's a splinter that is a dough or the flap like structure. Once the esophagus, the food bolus comes, this one opens and let the food bolus to come inside. Food bolus is now broken down and mixed well and formed chymine. Hereafter, we never say as food bolus. 
Now it's a chyme. It's a pulp-like uh, thing and partially digested food in the chyme. So they are partially digested carbohydrates, undigested lipids, water, minerals and protein. So this chyme, what has happened to this chyme? Now, first of all, when the HCL is present, what happened? The pepsinogen converts into pepsin. That is the protein digestive enzyme. This pepsin helps to convert the proteins into polypeptide. Now remember, protein food starts its digestion in stomach. In small children, you know milk protein is casinogen. It is a soluble protein and converted into casein with the act of renin. This action happens in small children's stomach. This casein is converted into polypeptide due to the action of pepsin. Other than chemical digestion, a small amount of physical digestion also occurred in the stomach due to muscle movement. So here, so far we didn't talk about the lipid digestion. In the mouth, carbohydrate starts its digestion. Some 30% of starch converted into maltose. Now in the stomach, Protein converts into polypeptides. But lipids, nothing. Now, this food ball is most to the small intestine. Here, if you unfold the small intestine, it's like this, a, a tube. Right? Now, let's see this. Do you know the length of this uh, small intestine it's about seven meters long the digestion of food mainly taken place in the small intestine so this small intestine can be divided into there are three major parts in the small intestine this upper part which is very very closer to the stomach is called duodenum then the jejunum and the ileum. Now remember these three parts are the parts of the small intestine. When the food is after two to uh, four hours, the this chyme through the pylorus splinter enters to the duodenum. That is the first part of the small intestine. Let's see what is happening. A duct is open and opens to the uh, duodenum. This duct brings pancreatic juice and bile. Bile is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder and this bile comes to the duodenum. Pancreatic juice is produced in the pancreas. This contains trypsin, amylase and lipase enzymes. Other than these two, or these two types of juices secreted into the duodenum and the rest of the small intestine, intestinal wall secretes intestinal juice. This contains maltase, sucrase, lactase, peptidase enzymes. Now let's see. How these enzymes act, act on the different types of food. Here, let's see. This is the whole summary of the chemical reaction happens in the small intestine. The upper part, we said that duodenum. Inside the duodenum, with the action of bile, lipids now emulsifier that means complex lipids 
turns into smaller droplets. Why it is needed, this facilitate, this increase the surface areas and facilitate lipase enzyme to act on it. Then the pancreatic juice contain amylase. Amylase act on starch and convert it to maltose. Lipase enzyme lipids converted to fatty acid and glycerol. That is the end product of lipids. Maltose it is not the end product. It is a disaccharide. Now trypsin act on the proteins and turns to polypeptides. Then when this food passes the duodenum and comes to the other parts of the small intestine. They are the maltase is there. Maltase act on maltose and turns to glucose. Sucrose, suc sucrase, it should be sucrase, worked on sucrose and turns to glucose and fructose. These are end products. And lactase enzyme act on lactose or the milk sugar and convert it into glucose and galactose. And peptidase enzyme act on all these polypeptides and convert it into amino acids. It is the end product of protein. Glucose is the end product of all carbohydrates. And a fatty acid and glycerol are the end products of lipids. Now you can understand all the complex molecules now in inside the intestine converted into absorbable simple form. Now these are the end products. Fatty acid, glycerol, protein, amino acid, carbohydrates turns to glucose, fructose and galactose. Now to get a better understand, I advise you to watch these two videos. It gives you a clear understanding about this digestion process. Before the end, I would like to thank, thank Mr. G. D. Subasinghe, a retired project officer science in NIE Sri Lanka, and I have referred this NIE pub NIE syllabus and the publication department. So thank you for watching the first lesson in this biology. Hope to meet you in the second lesson. Thank you very much.